This one should be useful for anyone on the planet. How to think before you act. But there's some psychological tricks we can apply. There are five questions, specific questions that we can ask that will help us to think before we act. But first of all, the context of this video. I am one of the founders and I currently serve on the board of directors for Nova Principles. You notice I've got my Nova shirt on today. Nova is a program that teaches children principles in the schools and typically these lessons are taught by law enforcement personnel. I'm the one who trains the cops who go into the schools and teach the kids and this program has been phenomenal in helping kids to do better thinking but I think this principle is helpful for anyone. The concept is called study the situation or in Nova we shorten it to STS, study the situation. It puts a little distance between us and what it is that we're encountering so that we can actually think before we act. So five questions that will help you to study the situation. Question number one, will this decision violate any moral or ethical principles? Part of the focus in the NOVA program is to make sure that our behavior is consistent with moral and ethical principles. I have found that most people understand these. In fact, I was running a group in a juvenile correctional facility. This was early on when I first became a psychologist. And in this group were kids who were incarcerated for some of the most heinous crimes you can imagine. And you'd think, oh, well, maybe they don't have any morals. Not true. I went around that group and asked every one of them questions about what's right and what's wrong. And they all answered them consistently. Hurting someone. Unanimously, they decided, no, that's wrong. Stealing. Wrong. See, what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And these kids know that. Moral and ethical principles that guide our behavior should also guide our thinking before we act. Will this decision cause me to violate any moral or ethical principle? Let's move to question number two. Who will be affected by my choice? For this question, we're connecting empathically to everyone else in our world and acknowledging that our behavior has an impact on other people. There's a lot of things that we might choose not to do when we realize who it's going to affect. Connect with that. Can you see how these questions would be helpful for a CEO of a major corporation as well as a fifth grader trying to decide what to do at recess? Who will be affected by my choice? Now the next one, question number three, might be kind of obvious, but it has to do with that concept called study the situation. Project and ask these, it's a two-part question. What will happen if I do this? And the second part, what will happen if I don't? What will happen if I do this? What will happen if I don't? For kids, this is a powerful way to get them thinking about cause and effect so that they can start connecting their own behavior to some of the outcomes that they're experiencing in their life. This is a good one for us as adults to consider too. What will happen if I do this? Think it through and you have to think just a little more than you want to, but not as much as you fear. Don't resist the thinking, just jump into it. What will happen if I do this? What will happen if I don't? Now here's question number four. And before I give you the question, here's the context around this. I got to interview coach Larry Gelwick years ago on my show Live On Purpose Radio. If you're not familiar with Coach Gelwick's, there was a major motion picture that came out called Forever Strong. This is a high school rugby team that was probably, arguably, the most winning team in all of sports. 
I think they had like nine losses in 20 years or something like that. It's just incredible the, the record that they had. Coach Gelwicks was the coach of this team. And one of his principles that he taught the boys on that team, and that is to never do anything that would embarrass your family or your team. So the question I associate with this one is, would I do this? if someone that I really respected knew about it? Would I do this if someone that I really respected knew about it? Like my coach, or maybe my parents, or a religious leader that I really respect, or someone in my family or community, a good friend. Would I do this if someone I really respected knew about it? That might change the course of some of your decisions. Now, the fifth question has to do with one of the primary themes that we teach in NOVA. In fact, the slogan that drives everything we do in NOVA is illuminating the path to excellence. Illuminating or lighting up the path to excellence. So question number five is this. Does this lead me to my path of excellence? In my office, I have a wood carving that I personally carved with a pocket knife. It's a chain made out of wood. It's actually a moving, working chain. And that takes a little bit of doing to create. I've had people ask me before, Dr. Paul, how did you do that? And my answer is, I cut off everything that doesn't look like that. That's kind of a smart aleck answer, but it's really true too. The chain was already there in that chunk of wood. I had to get everything else out of the way. That's the importance of this fifth question. Does this lead me to my path of excellence? That also assumes that you know something about where you want to go and whether your decisions today are leading you toward where you want to be tomorrow. I've mentioned NOVA Principles several times during this video. NOVA Principles Foundation is a sponsor of this and some other episodes of Live On Purpose TV. And what we've talked about here today is one of several principles that are taught in the NOVA program. If you're interested in learning more, would you please visit novaprinciples.com and there's a place there where you can make a donation. We would really appreciate that too as a nonprofit charity. And I wish